This is uh, video eight with, uh, com with four Computer Science 3344. It's also the first one with my uh, brand new microphone that I just now risk life and limb going to Walmart to pick up. They are not really observing uh, social distancing out there very well. But at any rate, I hope that the sound is worth the sacrifice. We are looking at Turing machines. In fact, I was doing a, uh, an example of what little delta might do to a machine. The little delta example, uh, I had a before and after. We had configurations, a computation. Here's sort of a summary of what little delta tells us to do. In one move, using our little delta mapping, a Turing machine does all of these things. All of these things. What does it do? Well, it changes state. Of course it does. We go from state Q whatever to Q whatever is next. It uh, will do this. Prints a symbol on the tape. Whoops, not pints. Subconscious leaking there. Prints a symbol on the tape. We could view the tape as everything. It's the input, where we put our input at the very beginning. It's where we would store stuff from memory if we're going to generate output, maybe to calculate the sum of something, which we could do with the Turing machine. Then it's going to serve as output. It is just all purpose, everything. Prints a symbol on the tape, replacing what was written there. Now, I didn't build it into that description, but it's reading one square, and that's actually how it's referred to. One square on the tape. It looks to see what symbol is sitting there, and then the little delta mapping says, okay, you rip that off and you put this in its place. Another single symbol. So if we want to change a bunch of symbols, maybe we're uh, generating A to the N, A to B to the 2N, whatever, then we'll just have to do that one square at a time. We don't get to write whole strings. We don't get to read whole strings. Another thing it does, it moves the tape read right head. Starts with an R. Read right head. I envision this like a, an old fashioned reel to reel tape recorder if you've ever seen one of those. You can make the tape go backwards and forwards, and there is a single read right head that's looking at one place on that magnetic tape. Moves the tape read right head one square. To the left or right. And you may think, well, you know what? For this machine that I claimed, and it seems to be just anything goes, the least restricted. You can go anywhere you want. You can, um, well, that's it. You can go anywhere you want on the tape. You're not restricted. You're just looking at one end of it like a stack. This might seem like this is really restricted. What if I need to go a long distance? We just set up a loop. You set up a uh, little delta transition rules that allow you to loop and skip all the Bs or skip all the blanks or whatever it is you're going to do. So this is not as restrictive as it looks. It just means you've got to pay attention to each square along the way. Also known as sequential access. Okay, now we did not at all in any shape, form, or fashion look at any example of a Turing machine itself last time. So how about this? Turing machine example. This was a little delta example. This is a Turing machine example. Uh, let's design. Design a Turing machine TM to recognize this language. L equals the set of all will resurrect happies and joys. Happy to the end, joy to the end. Some number of happies and joys. Think fast. Uh, context free, not regular. Happies and joys, where n is at least one, greater than or equal to one. Now, rather than just diving in and maybe even drawing a picture or anything else like that, with turn machines, they get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So we'll often want to back up and do a little design plan first. That's why I called it design instead of just uh, write one or construct one. 
Uh, our, my plan is going to be this. I'm going to have a loop that starts at step one. Replace, which we know we can do. Replace the leftmost happy with a capital H. And if that seems familiar to you, that's because uh, we did stuff like that with our stack, with push down automata. Replace the leftmost happy, though, that's different. We're not just consuming the happy, we're putting something else in its place. It's the same general idea. Here's the, here's the idea. In this language, capital sigma is just the happy symbol and the joy symbol. Those are valid symbols to have on the tape. So happy and joy are both in capital gamma, that gallows looking thing, but also a capital H is in there. So think of it that way. The input alphabet in general is a proper subset, used most of the time, of the tape alphabet. It's definitely a subset, often a proper subset. Spent way too much time on that. To uh, move right to the, get these right, leftmost joy Replace it with J. And you are so far ahead of me, it's embarrassing. That's what we're going to be doing in this loop. We replace the happy symbols with H's, replace the joy symbols with J, and as long as they match up, then it's a string of the language. You knew that already, didn't you? But we still got to do it. We still got to write out steps of our algorithm. Three... Move left, this is where I get confused and if I'm not careful, left and right are always uh, confused and, can, well, move right, that's so, so far so good. No, I knew it. I knew I'd get right and left mixed up. Left is what I wear, used to wear a watch on. So I want to move left to the rightmost. H. And if that doesn't make any sense, I am going to do a specific example after I get these steps up here to try to make an intuitive case for writing the algorithm this way. Four, move right one square. And yes, I am really going to have to go through this carefully to make sure I've got my lefts and rights all set up here. Move right one square, S-Q-U-A-R-E. And why were we doing that? If I've done this correctly up to this point, that's going to be to the leftmost happy. You see how confused I make myself? How are we going to stop? Well, here's how we stop. If looking for, this goes beneath step four, by the way. If looking for joy but find a blank. I'll have to read that back since these are getting scrunched down here. If looking for joy, but find a blank, it means I don't have enough joys to match with the happies that I've seen going through this algorithm. So I'll go to Q subject. You are not in the language, you original input string. So we'll go to Q reject, which is like a trap state. Uh, what else could happen if we find no more happies? Then two things can happen. One, if no more joys. Then Go to Q, accept. You're really going to have to listen to the sound on this and hope I'm speaking clearly because getting down here, this is getting all scrunched. If we find no more happies, one thing that can happen is if we find no more joys, then Q, accept. It means they match up. The happies and the joys do. Um, that's one thing. The other thing that could happen, if uh, still more joys, I don't have to make this, a, a double layer. Man, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm sorry. If still more joys, then 
Van Q reject. Hopefully it's intuitively clear enough that it didn't have to be absolutely positively clearly written on the board. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna burn a happy and go over there and if we find a matching joy, we're gonna burn that. And then turn around and head back the other direction and we just keep going back and forth. These things operate a lot like a sewing machine or something. They just bounce back and forth left and right. And after we do all that and we get to our boundary conditions here, it's gonna make all the difference. It's where we make the decision. If we're going to the right, looking for a joy to match a happy symbol we just burned up and we can't find it. If we run into a blank instead, then we'll go immediately to Q reject, you're out of here. We do not accept you as a string in this language. If we're going to the left and we don't find any more happies, uh, it's not necessarily the case that all is lost. When we find out that there are no more happies, we'll turn around and go the other direction. If we run into a blank before we run into a joy, that means there are no more joys. And that means they did match up all the way down the line. And we immediately go to Q accept. Or the other possibility, that should have been in this box. The possibility number two, if there are no more happies, is there are still more joys. We run into a joy symbol before we run into blanks. And then we would go to Q reject. Okay. I don't know if I got room to squeeze an example up here or not. But you know what? I don't need that anymore. So... I don't have to squeeze. I'll allocate. And I won't run through the entire example. I'm just, again, trying to build like a little intuitive example here. Happy. Those are really happy. Happy, happy, happy. Joy, joy, joy. Let's say that is our input string. So what that means is that the initial state of the tape is that's slid all the way over to the left and each one of these is in a separate square on the tape, each symbol individually. And after that is where we run into an infinite number of blanks if we decide we need a bunch of blanks or we need to write over those with something else, whatever. But we get to assume an infinite number of blanks over on the right. This says uh, I'll switch colors again. I hope all these colors show up. I'm gonna be rough with a new microphone and the sound's wrong and the colors are no good. I gotta do this all over again, but anyway, don't worry about that. Let's see. Replace the leftmost happy with an H. Done, that's an H. That's where the read right head was initially. We'll assume it's at the far left. Move right to the leftmost joy. Move right, move right. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right there, we'll stop right there. Done. Move right to the leftmost joy. Replace it with a J. Burn up a joy symbol. And I didn't leave room to rewrite a new one, but I'm gonna say that that J right there actually replaced the joy symbol, just like this H replaced the happy symbol. Move left. Okay, now we're going back the other direction. To the rightmost H. So there's only one H. So when we move right, we'll go this way, this way, this way. And there we run into the right, the, what is it? The rightmost H. In other words, we're going to get back to the leaning, the leading edge of all the happies that have been burned up already. In this case, there's only one. To the rightmost H. Now we move right one square just here. And where are we? That's the leftmost, left and right could agree, to the leftmost happy. In other words, the next unburned up happy symbol. And I don't have a loop. How about this? Go to step one. That'll help, won't it? I move to the left most happy. Now I go back up to step one, replace the left most happy right here with an H. So you're out of here, you're an H, and we're about to see a pattern developing if we're not our, having our yuck. Move right to the left most joy. So we'll skip over the happy, we'll skip over the J, and we'll move to this left most joy symbol, and here we go. And you can see what's gonna happen. It's gonna zigzag back and forth. It replaces that to match the happy. Then it comes back over here, replaces that with an H. Then it goes back over there and replaces that with a joy. Matches it up one to one. Now when it comes back over here, here we're gonna hit a boundary condition. If we're looking for uh, happies and we find no more happies, one, if we turn around and go this direction, we don't find any more joy symbols either, then we're good to go. And in this particular case, yes, that would be accepted. And if you're wondering, why doesn't he at least, for this one example, 
give us all the little delta transitions and more description and more documentation and all that stuff? Well, you're in luck. I did. It's in the document that was attached to the email that had the link to this video. So all of that is there. I would say go through that with a fine tooth comb, also known as in excruciating detail, and make sure absolutely every bit of that makes sense. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do the homework, which is to construct some more of these machines. So I think this was just intended to be an intuitive introduction, whether it worked out that way or not. So I'm going to leave with that and lean on you to come by during office hours if you get stuck on this stuff, because uh, I, I grant you it is, it is pretty complicated. But until then, I'll see you online.